Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. It's a nice day here in Louisiana finishing up the winter and heading into spring and spring has definitely sprung. So it's really beautiful out in the woods right around the house here. And today we're going to be taking a look at a new piece of kit that I'm really excited to have which is the Solo Stove. This is a stainless steel, relatively lightweight, uh, wood-burning backpacking stove. I've seen so much about it and I'm excited to check it out. So stay tuned and we're going to take a detailed look at the Solo Stove. All right, so this is the Solo Stove. Um, this is actually the Solo Stove as well as a 900 milliliter pot that you can buy along with it and it nests really nicely. I'll put the weights below uh, of everything. The total weight on this, if I remember, was about one pound, one ounce. That's what you'll see with both stuff sacks and everything in here. So first, we can look at the actual um, pot. This is the stove itself. We'll get it out and take a look at that here in a second. This is a very well-made um, stainless steel pot. You can see it has marks on the side that allow you to measure the water. The lid is very nice. You can see it has a lip on it. And that lip stands on pretty close. Of course, it doesn't lock on, but it will not fall off very easily. It also has a very nice design uh, top lid here. And like most of these these days, it can slide over and it will lock so that it won't fall down on you. And then you unlock it and it'll fall down. It's got very nice foldable handles. It's a good size mug. It's big enough to definitely boil water for um, a mountain house or whatever it might be. It's a 30 ounce capacity to the top. Probably holds about 36 ounces total if you max it out. Has a small little pour spout you can see right there. And overall, I really like the design. I have a lot of cook pots, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy this, and I figured that one of my other pots would nest with this stove, but I thought, well, I'll go ahead and buy it. Um, the total cost of both was $105, and I think the cost of just the stove is 65 or 70, so you do the math. This is about a $35 pot, and it's really actually worth it. I think it's really nice. Uh, there you go, and you see Solo Stove. It comes with its own stuff sack, and now we're going to take a look at the stove. So this is the stove itself. Um, it is a very simple concept. You've seen this a lot on other channels, but we're going to take a look at it. This is not the Titan or the really large. This is just the Solo Stove Lite, I believe they call it. Relatively small, okay? And it has two components, basically. It has the actual stove itself and the stand. The stove itself, I want to give you guys a really good look at it. Um, it has air vents down here to allow air to come in from the bottom. It has a grate at the bottom, which is, holds the fuel on top. And then on the inside lip, you can see it has holes here. So air will come in through the bottom, come around to the top, and start to vortex up here and actually gasify. And that's what makes this particular stove so efficient. Now a lot of people talk about how efficient it is and it made me kind of wonder whether it was. And I can tell you I've used it several times and it really is that efficient. We're gonna light it up here in a second and show y'all. This, as, as you saw, is a nesting pot stand. And the cool thing about this is if you get this on top, you can feed fuel right through here and allow you to keep the fire going without a problem. So I'm gonna collect a little bit of uh, sticks and twigs around here, just kind of debris on the ground, and we're going to start this baby up. You can see along the sides there, the vents coming up, and that's the gasification. Um, I've had this going for about two minutes, and you can see how quick and easy it is. So I'm gonna move the camera, and we're gonna start boiling up some water for coffee. So as y'all can see, uh, very easy to get started, very efficient and uh, pretty enjoyable. I like it because I like starting fires and a lot of times when you're out uh, backpacking you really don't feel like starting one or you're tired but this way you get a little bit of both. You only have to collect a little bit of debris and you can easily boil yourself up some water. A couple of tips that I've noticed pretty quickly 
Um, and you, obviously you, you can't just kind of leave this stove alone. You have to keep it fed with fuel. Um, but if you're doing your regular camp chores, as long as every, you know, two or three minutes you come back, just do a couple things, pop a couple of little small twigs in there, it'll keep going. You know, it'll boil water, I'm sure, without the flames going up, but if you want it to go quickly, you want to keep that uh, fuel in there. The other thing is, is that um, I found to make sure and chop your pieces up pretty small, if you stick it in there and kind of half of it is sticking out, that half is going to catch on fire very quickly and uh, sit up the side of your um, pot pretty easily and it's not nearly as efficient so I try to break my pieces up pretty small. Uh, you could see how simple it was to start it. I used a little bit of birch bark. Uh, here in Louisiana we have no birch bark but uh, one of my YouTube buddies Howard Cabot Bluegill never checked out his channel. Check out his channel. It's pretty neat. Uh, nice places up in Vermont and he was nice enough last year to send me some birch bark and I'm running low so I might have to get somebody else trying to get me some more birch bark but uh, it's so easy and it, it tends to be my favorite way to start these little small stoves because you can get it going and it creates so much heat right away that even if your twigs and stuff are even a little damp you're gonna get it going and you're gonna continue to have a fire which is nice um, I collected probably two small pieces of wood you know branches with twigs and that's what I've used so far We'll check the water. It is almost boiling. Uh, this is about a cup and a half of water, not too full cups, right? 10 ounces of water, um, 12 ounces of water, something along those lines. I can hear it's boiling now. Probably took five minutes to get it boiling, I would say. Uh, so from the start, I think it's fair to say, and I've done this a couple of times now with this particular stove, if you've got good dry wood and you've got birch bark or something you can start a fire with very quickly, um, you can see it's going really well now. Um, 15 minutes from start to boil, if you do it right, as far as collecting your stuff, chopping it up, putting it in, getting it rolling, 15 minutes is pretty good uh, considering that you don't have to carry in a fuel with you when you're out on the trail. So what do I think of the Solo Stove? I really like it. Um, what are the positives and why do I think I'll carry it quite a bit on the trail? Well, if you're ultralight backpacking, even though this particular stove, the stove itself, is nine ounces. The pot itself is about eight ounces, somewhere around those lines, eight and a half ounces. Uh, that's pretty lightweight considering the fact that you don't have to carry any fuel. Um, you can use an alcohol stove with this. It's, it's designed to use that if you want to, but I mean, why would you? It is extremely efficient. It doesn't use up much in the way of um, fuel just some twigs, pine cones, whatever it might be, and it's really easy to find that stuff. You don't have to carry all that fuel. I've always found the alcohol stoves to be very useful, but something about measuring out the fuel and worrying if I'll have enough always kind of, I don't know why, maybe I'm just OCD, worries me. Um, and then of course there's the canister stoves, which are great as well, but who has not run out of fuel in a canister stove? I don't think anybody has not, unless you've never been backpacking too much. We've all run out of fuel in a canister stove, so I like the idea of having all the fuel I could ever need around me. If you go to pretty much any woodland in America, or in the world most likely, you're going to be able to find enough debris on the ground to start the solo stove and use it. Another interesting aspect of the solo stove is preparedness. We do some prepping here on the channel, and this is a great survival stove. Um, you can use just about anything anywhere as again to get water boiling and most survival meals like backpacking meals are dehydrated and uh, you, all you need is a little bit of boiling water and you can uh, go ahead and cook something up to eat. Um, you can easily use a solo stove to uh, boil water to uh, purify it and make sure you can drink it to make it safe. I forgot gloves so let's see what I can figure out here to try to get the ashes out of here without burning my hands off. All right, now that should cool off pretty quick. All right guys, so there you go, a look at the Solo Stove Light. Definitely a pretty awesome little bit of kit. I'm really happy with it. A very well engineered and thought out stove. Uh, not the cheapest stove in the world, 
Uh, like I said, the stove itself is $65. You can get both of these for about $100 on Amazon. The design seems to me to be extremely efficient. I've had, this is maybe my third or fourth wood stove that I've had and the design itself and the way that it brings the air up definitely makes a difference and definitely makes it better and more efficient at burning wood. Um, it does eat the wood up pretty quickly, especially if you're using a pretty dried up wood. It burns very quickly, um, so you do have to keep an eye on it. The reason I like it is because it's an unlimited amount of fuel and you can pretty much um, find all the fuel you need and sustain yourself out there without having to worry about carrying uh, alcohol or canisters, etc. So again, real quick before we go, we'll show you how easy it packs up. You get your pot stand, you put it on top, you put your stove itself into there, you get your um, pot, put the stove inside, fits perfectly inside, put the top on there, and get your whole thing into the second stuff sack. The second stuff sack is very nice. Both stuff sacks are nice because you basically keep ash and soot out of your pot on the inside, and then you can also keep ash and soot out of your bag from the pot itself. And there you go. You've got yourself a packed up solo stove light with the cook pot. So that's the end of our video today. Uh, a good look at the solo stove light. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, uh, guys, the, the channel's growing tremendously. Um, I'm up to 5,000 subscribers now. I'm really thinking about what my 5,000 subscriber giveaway might be, and in fact, Depending on when I let this video out, I might have already started the giveaway. Who knows? But I'm working on it, even if it's like backwards in time or something. It's been a nice day to be able to come back out, a couple uh, 10 minute walk behind the house and sit in the woods a little bit, boil some water up for some coffee. I hope you guys enjoyed the solo stove. I've had my eye on it for probably a year and a half or so and finally decided to bite the bullet and get it. And I'm very glad I did. I think it's gonna be my primary backpacking stove for the near future and I encourage people to take a look at it because I think it's a great product. I bought it. This is not a uh, solo stove uh, sponsored deal. This is something that I bought with my own money. So anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD and I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful spring.